Microsoft is proud to sponsor Nova for celebrating the potential in us all. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. The desolate wastes of the Taklamakan Desert at the heart of Central Asia are haunted by an ancient mystery. It was here long ago that East and West two of the greatest civilizations on earth made imperceptible contact and here that faint traces of ancient life have long pressed a deep and vexing enigma did the civilization of ancient China arise in isolation or was there an unremembered link with the cultures of the West Now the echoes of voices long silent are offering startling testimony. Like other detective stories, this one begins with a dead body. This woman and others like her are as old as 3,800 years, yet remarkably well preserved. More startling yet, the mummies are clearly not Chinese, but they may provide evidence to solve the riddle of ancient China's interaction with the West. An expedition is now setting out into the Taklamakan, headed far across the dunes and deep into a long-lost past. The quest to reclaim the mummy people's story began when Chinese scholar Victor Mayer virtually stumbled on the most important find of his career. In 1987, I went into the museum in Urumqi and walked into this room that was full of mummies and I couldn't believe what I saw. The label said that they dated back to 1000 BC. They looked as fresh as though they had just been exhumed a week or two ago. From that moment forward, I was totally enchanted with the mummies. Also here is archaeologist Janine Davis Kimball, who specializes in ancient nomadic peoples. Charlotte Roberts, forensic anthropologist, will be helping to decipher the ancient remains. The mummies are rarely made available for outside scrutiny. But the Chinese archaeologist who found this woman lying exposed on the desert sands allows the team to see her. This corpse was found on the surface, close to the surface of uh, Tomb 2. Um, according to Mr. He, it was partially dismembered and was a sacrificial victim for the main occupant of the tomb. He believes that this person was from another tribe and that the, it was sacrificed at, in respect for the main occupant of the tomb. Her eyes have been gouged out. She's lacking her arms beneath the elbow joints and from the pelvis down below, there, there's nothing remaining. Can we actually look at the pelvis? So there are no leg bones at all? No leg bones at all. Yeah. They, they, they've been jerked out or yanked out according to Mr. Ho. Oh, looking at the pelvis, she looks, she's no. quite young actually. If, if you look at the surface here, mm -hmm. you see a ridge and furrow pattern, mm -hmm. which is characteristic of a young, young person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there were no leg bones at all? No. It is a fascinating yet oddly intimate encounter with a woman who lived and suffered more than 3,000 years ago. More chilling yet is the fate of an infant child found buried below the woman on the surface. Charlotte, how old would you say this child is? Well, I can just see uh, the incisor of teeth in the lower jaw. This would indicate a person uh, about the age of one year, but could be as young as eight months or mm. as old as 16 months. And this 
little baby boy was found in a hole over the main occupant of the grave. His head was inserted head first, and his feet were sticking up. So according to Mr. He, he was buried alive, and that he's howling, he's, he's screaming. Uh, also, Mr. He says that there are traces of mucus coming out of his nostrils and traces of tears. So according to Mr. He, this child was sacrificed again for the, the priestess. Oh, oh, I can see that. Little wow. hand clenched. The visitor's attention is drawn to the fabric wrapping the tiny body. It was not made by the Chinese, who hadn't yet acquired the craft of weaving wool with such sophistication. Where did the little boy come from? And very fair hair too. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you actually look at the profile, um, the nose is quite large and long. Mm -hmm. Long nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although at this age we wouldn't really want to say much about ethnic affiliation. There is no uncertainty about the ethnic origins of the body buried in the main chamber below the other two. This perfectly preserved mummy was a woman of about 40. It's a European type of person. So she's quite tall. She's uh, 1.72 meters. Her nose is very high. These mummies were not embalmed. Their amazing preservation is due to the dryness and salinity of the desert soil. This is the, the mistress or the lady of the main uh, occupant of the tomb. He thinks that uh, there was a war and that these other sacrificed uh, victims were captured in the war and then out of respect for her they were uh, buried with her. From this cemetery, there have been 17 desiccated corpses found, all in quite good state of preservation. But the most beautiful one is this in our museum. Uh -huh. When I brought her out of the grave and held her in my arms, I realized, I realized that she was the most beautiful woman on earth. I was startled. I was holding the most beautiful woman on earth. If she were alive today, or if I were alive 3,000 years ago, I would certainly make her my wife. But how could a Chinese man like Mr. Huh? have met a blonde woman 3,000 years ago. According to many scholars and predominant Chinese belief, China's civilization was essentially evolving in isolation from the West. Though it concerns a distant past, the question resonates in the present. Most of the people who dwell in China's westernmost regions don't look especially Chinese. Many of these people, known as Wiggers, don't think of themselves as Chinese either. In recent years, some have called for autonomy from China, and to them, the mummies have proof that their ancestors were an ethnically distinct group, here long before the arrival of Chinese conquerors. As a result, the question of the mummy's ethnic identity is a sensitive matter. No one disputes that eventually China's isolation was broken and a lively traffic in commerce and culture flowed between East and West. To this day, weathered beacon towers rise from the arid wastes drawing the traveler's eye to the path of the fabled Silk Road.
Beaten into the land by traders' caravans and conquering legions about 2,000 years ago, it was the interstate highway of the ancient world, a bustling corridor where disparate cultures rubbed elbows and exchanged precious goods and ideas. The Silk Road, 4,000 miles long, spanned the entire world as the ancients knew it. At one end, the great civilizations of Rome and Greece. From there, the route made its way across the Near East and through the untamed Russian steppes. Those who survived the brutal winds and marauding pirates went on to confront forbidding mountains and white-hot dunes. Crossing the Taklamakan Desert was the final ordeal, leading at last to China's frontier.